A very common perception about healthy eating is that it's far more expensive. And while in some cases this might actually be true, it's not always the case. And it is possible to feed your family healthy, nourishing food without completely breaking the bank. And one of the best ways to accomplish this is just to skill up in your kitchen and start to make more simple everyday foods yourself, um, homemade, from scratch. It will cut down big time on the cost. Obviously, it will take a little bit more time. That convenience factor um, is gone. However, once you get in the rhythm of making these simple everyday foods in your kitchen, it really becomes something that is not effortless, but very easy because it just becomes part of something that you do. And you can provide foods that are highly nourishing, um, that have much more simple ingredients. And you can do all of this without spending as much on the pricier, you know, whole food um higher quality food options at the grocery store. Now, one of my biggest takeaways for this video that I want you to walk away from is if you are watching this and you're someone who is new um, or newer to cooking, you know, a lot in your own home, making foods from scratch, making things homemade, this might seem really overwhelming and you're like, I don't make any of these things, but I want you to remember and really keep in mind that this is something that can be done very gradually over time and even the smallest baby step forward will compound over time and if you dive in and you have these you know big goals of all of a sudden you're just going to make everything from scratch um i don't even think you even really need to make everything from scratch i don't think that that is that's certainly not my goal um but from a cost saving standpoint you certainly can save a lot of money doing it this way but if you dive in all at once and overwhelm yourself to the point where you just quit, then um, that obviously was not sustainable. And not that it was a waste of time, but you want it to be something that you're actually going to be, be able to keep up. So I always say pick one thing and add one thing at a time, master it, make it part of your routine, make it part of your rhythm, and then try and then add in something else. So do it gradually over time, doing it gradually over time, I feel is the best way to do that. So one of the things that I try to make, um, mostly myself in-house, is our bread products. So whether it's sandwich bread or right here, I'm making um, like little hamburger buns um, for, for dinner. Um, whether you're doing sourdough or whether you're doing yeast, these days I've been doing a combination of the two. Um, I've always been a sourdough girl, but um, yeast honestly is just, it, it's it, it's a shortcut. It is. And it, it saves some time and brain space for me because I can do things in one day instead of spreading it over two days. And I'm not um, you know, mi mixing dough late at night before I go to bed when I have like literally nothing left to give after a long day. Um, so I think either way, I think sourdough is always going to be the most ideal option from a health standpoint. But if yeast is how you're getting it done, then I say go for it, girl. So making your own bread products, you're going to be making them from really simple ingredients. You're going to be missing out on so much of the additives that are going to be added in the store. And if you're using fresh milled flour, especially, you're going to be like supercharging them with nutrition, which is literally not, you can't even buy something like that at the store. So um, I've done a whole video on fresh milled flour recently, but bread products are a big thing that I try and make at home both to improve nutrition, um, but also to save a little bit of money because it ends up costing way less than trying to you know, buy like the best that the store has to offer. Um, another thing that I always make from scratch, and this is not necessarily for nutrition <laughs> per se, but more so um, because we just absolutely love them and they taste a thousand times better than store-bought, and that is homemade tortillas. So I do... Um, like to make them sourdough nowadays um i can link the recipe down below i think it's a farmhouse on boone recipe the one that i always follow she's the best for sourdough recipes but um these are easy to whip up like first thing in the morning and then i just let them sit all day i do use all-purpose flour for these i have tried to use fresh milled flour i could probably experiment more with like doing half and half um, but they just uh, th you just can't beat how they turn out with all-purpose when you make them with fresh milled they're just kind of hard and they crack and it's just not the same and my kids just love these and so do I honestly so this is just how I make them um, but I do make them sourdough and they are just so delicious and all you need is some flour and some salt some starter a little bit of oil which is going to cost you a lot less than the tortillas that you buy in the store um, at least flour tortillas um, 
or I should say at least flour tortillas because if you buy corn tortillas, you can often get ones that are made with very simple ingredients, especially if they're like in a refrigerated or even frozen section. Um, but flour tortillas, the ones that sit out on the shelf, usually have like an entire paragraph of ingredients. So they're just not the healthiest option. And then from a taste standpoint, I just, I, I literally have no interest in buying them because once you go homemade tortilla, you just never go back. And it's one of those things where when I first started making them, I was like, this is a lot of work. <laughs> this is a lot of extra work. But now I'm just so used to doing it and we have tacos like once a week, every week. It's everyone's favorite meal pretty much. And my kids actually like to help. I usually give the toddlers a little bit of dough just to like roll out and play with. Um, and my oldest is actually like becoming kind of helpful in the kitchen, which is like, wow, this is nice. Um, where she'll help me flip them. And um, she's actually like legitimately becoming helpful instead of just, you know, helping mom in the kitchen, which is fun. And I, I always try and be in a headspace where I want to invite my kids into the kitchen because I think it's just so good for them. Um, and I know that they enjoy it. And I want them to feel like they can be in the kitchen with mom and kind of learning these skills bit by bit as we go through um, the years of their childhood. But tortillas is just another thing that I always make from scratch. And this obviously is going to be a lot cheaper than buying them at the store, um, you know, depending on the ingredients you're using. And again, the taste just cannot be beat. So another thing that I like to always make um, in-house is granola. And this is a great one for cost saving because if you are buying granola in the store that's not made with you know processed oils like canola oil like if you're actually buying one that's made with butter or coconut oil that has really high quality ingredients you're going to be paying a lot for that little bag of granola like it's it's a high price for not a lot and the thing with granola is it's so easy to make especially just like a real simple one um, and then you can always add in different add-ins, like whatever you've got. If you want to add dried fruit, if you want to add, um, you know, more nuts, different kinds of nuts. If you want to even add chocolate chips at the end, you can. Um, you can do different spices. And I mean, you really can make it like uh, you can create a lot of variety without very much work or even having, you know, like fancy ingredients on hand. Um, but it's just so sink and easy. You literally toss everything in a bowl. I have been using the same recipe. It's from Melissa K. Norris's handmade book. I'll link that down below because it's just, it's one of my favorite books for um, learning how to make things at home from scratch. Um, and in a way that's like simple and attainable. There are so many um, tips from her I guess great grandmother or grandmother from the Great Depression um, era, and so it's it's really all about doing this, you know, kind of like on a budget. So I love that book; it's a great resource if you are kind of starting to dive into this. There's a lot of great recipes in there, um, but I love her granola recipe. It's so easy. It's just like oats and um, coconut oil and some cinnamon and maple syrup and vanilla, and then you add some nuts, a little bit of salt. You just toss it all together. This is a great one to make with your kids because, I mean, you literally can't mess it up. They can just help you dump everything in the bowl, mix it up, and then you just spread it all out on a parchment-lined baking sheet, bake it in your oven. Um, I think it's at 275, which is like kind of low, obviously, um, for about, like, she says 45 to 55 minutes, which my oven runs hot, that, that would burn it. Um, so just kind of keep an eye on it, maybe stir it around, you know, halfway through, just so it toasts evenly, but it's so crunchy, it stores so well, and it's so incredibly easy. And again, you're making it with high quality ingredients, and it's going to cost you a lot less than if you were to buy like the best granola at the store. Another thing I always make at home, it's another one of those incredibly easy things to make that costs significantly less than buying it pre-made, is sauerkraut. So sauerkraut is a great fermented food, especially if you are new to ferments. Um, I would say this one is pretty foolproof. 
and I feel like it always turns out pretty good as long as you, you know, follow the, the instructions. Um, but all you need is sauerkraut and salt. So basically it's going to cost you like the cost of a head of cabbage, which is not much. And you're just using a couple tablespoons maybe of salt. So very, very low price at my local store. I mean, I actually haven't looked in a while with grocery prices nowadays, it's probably even higher, but to buy like a small bag of sauerkraut, um, like, like a brand that I like, I want to say it's like six, seven dollars. Um, and this was, I haven't even looked in years, so God knows what it costs now, but, um, it, like that's crazy. Like a, a head of cabbage is like a couple bucks. So it's a significant cost savings and it's really easy to make. So all you do is you just chop up the cabbage really fine, add in the salt. I usually do a tablespoon of um, salt for every like large head of cabbage. So I just kind of eyeball it. Um, and then that is what is going to actually create the brine because it's going to pull all the water out of the cabbage. As you can see, it, it is like dripping by the end. So I do manually kind of press it and squeeze it. Um, but I actually was just listening to a podcast recently where someone, it's, I'm like, why have I not thought of that? They're like, I literally just leave it out overnight. I don't even like pound it. It's just by the next day, there's tons of water that has been pulled out, makes a brine super easy. Um, so I'm going to start doing that from now on because it's even easier, but you just load it all into a jar, top it with a cabbage leaf to like press everything down. Cause you want to make sure nothing is exposed to the air. Cause that's how it could get moldy, put a little fermenting weight on it. And then I sit it for about seven days or so um, until I like the taste. And then I just store it in the fridge. Super easy. Another thing to make at home is yogurt. So you can definitely buy, um, like, especially if you go to like a bulk food store, like Costco or something, like you could probably get like whole milk yogurt um, at a pretty decent price in bulk. However, I have been experimenting recently with making uh, yogurt from raw milk. I've always made, or I've made yogurt at home for a long time, but I would always pasteurize it first in my Instant Pot because um, it always just seemed to turn out better that way and it wasn't runny. But I recently found um, like found out about these particular yogurt cultures that a lot of people seem to rave about online. And they do, I would say it turns out pretty well. So from a nutrition standpoint, you are not, um, you're not pasteurizing the milk. So there's a lot, uh, it's, it's just a more nourishing option that you can't really buy at the store. Um, which is why I've been starting to make it at home this way. Um, but if you, but I will say if you're buying, you know, yogurt that's already flavored in like individual little cups, that's going to cost you so much more than just buying it or making it yourself at home. Um, and what I usually do is I just always have like raspberry jam in the fridge. And when, whenever we want yogurt, um, like if my kids want yogurt, I'll just put that on top and they like lap it up. It makes it so yummy and it costs a lot less. Um, and also I'm controlling the ingredients. So we're not, um, you know, paying a ton of money for like super sugar yogurt at the store. Okay. So then another thing that I always make, this is another ferment is water kefir. I have made kombucha for a long time on and off, but I recently like over the summer started making water kefir and we just seem to like it better. Pretty much everyone in my family, um, except for I have one kid that's not a kombucha fan, um, but everybody else loves kombucha. So that's why I always made it, but I don't know. Water kefir just to me, it just it doesn't have that vinegary tang to it. It truly tastes like, um, like if I've been using grape juice, so it tastes like grape soda. And um, the process is pretty much the same, except you're using water kefir grains instead of a kombucha scoby. And you can buy the grains online. I got mine over the summer from Cultures for Health, but this is one of those things where you can use those grains over and over and over. It's just a continuous batch. Every few days we go through this process and we fill up a few bottles. And as you can see, my kids love to help with this. They love water kefir. They're always very excited when it's like finally ready to go in the fridge, all nice and cold and bubbly. Um, and to buy kombucha, or I mean my stores, I haven't seen water kefir in my stores, but um, to buy kombucha, which is something that's very similar, is again, it's not cheap. It's such a great um, you know, drink for your gut. It's full of natural probiotics. It's so tasty, it's fizzy, it's very satisfying. But again, it's one of those things that you're going to spend a decent amount of money. Even if like, we would buy it from Costco, like bottle packs of bottles from Costco, but even that, like you you just it just doesn't hold a candle to making it yourself because it's going to be, end up being so much um, so much less expensive. So that's something that we also make on repeat. And then another thing is mayonnaise, which 
once you start making it at home, you will truly never go back because it's so easy. It's just, I do an egg, um, some salt, a little bit of mustard, a little bit of lemon juice, a little bit of white vinegar, and then I just fill up the cup with avocado oil to like halfway, blend it up with an immersion blender. It's so easy and a million times better than the ingredients you're gonna find in typical mayo and then a lot less, a lot less money than the mayo you're gonna find made with like you know, higher quality oils. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you're walking away feeling inspired. I will see you guys in the next one.